weekend game plan gets out into the community with Suburban Newspaper Sports Editor Mark Lidbetter and the Amateur Sports Report. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good, good. Sorry about your ping pong. Uh, I hear you were in the thick of things. Uh, you know, it was it was competitive. I made some unforced errors. But enough about me. Let's get to the real athletes. Uh, Bader Faye's own Rianne Wilkinson, uh, a stalwart on that national team. She's gone, huh? Yeah, well, you had a trio of the uh, players announce their retirement last, last week. Uh, Rianne stepped down along with Melissa Tancardi and Mary No. But for Rianne, she is the third most capped player in history of the women's national soccer team. She's made 180 appearances for Canada and 150 starts. Now, her first appearance came in a 6-1 loss in a friendly against Team USA back on April 26 in 2003 at Molson Stadium when she was only 20 years old. And I was there. I actually I covered that match for it so we could have a profile on her making that appearance. You know, but... Good honor. It takes a lot of commitment to uh, stick with the program from these athletes at this level. Uh, she's a two-time Olympic bronze medalist. She was named to the all-time Canada 11 women soccer team in, 20, in 2012. She's competed in four FIFA Women's World Cups, uh, three Olympic Games, three Pan American Games where they've won a gold as Team Canada. And she's also served on the uh, Strategic Planning Committee. You know, but like she started at the age of five on the strawberries, as she said, uh, in Lakeshore soccer. She was a multi-sport athlete. She excelled in ringette and rugby, actually playing on the Quebec level teams. And, you know, they've got a park named after her, Rianne Wilkinson Park in Bay Durfee. Now, the trio is going to be honored on February 4th at Canada's bronze celebration game in Vancouver when they play a friendly against Mexico. But like, there's so many young players, like we had the Lakeshore soccer girls in after they won the U16 title, that they've looked up because here's a girl from their own community sure. and she comes back. So I just wanted to give a good shout out to her for all that's, that commitment. That's great. All right, moving on here, speaking of soccer, Lac St. Louis. What's going on yes. there? Uh, well, you know, it's almost like we would like to say an embarrassment of uh, riches. They have so many young, talented soccer players that the Lac St. Louis Regional Soccer Association has launched a pilot project where they're doing uh, training with players that maybe they didn't make like a Team Quebec level or they didn't make a Triple A team, but they're well, you know, they're very well skilled Double A players. So they put a call out earlier uh, into the winter season, and they had 120 players sign up to try which they had to cut 70 players, so they were down to about 50 or so, so like 25 boys, 25 girls of the uh, U16 age category. And now every Sunday they work out at Catalonia. They get some intense training to up their skills. And what's happened also is the advantage of this, Lac St. Louis has signed uh, an entente with the Impact Academy, and actually four of the boys are being looked at at the Impact Academy to make team for this coming summer and for the girls their group because they're not a team you know they don't register a team they're being trained it's not a triple a level squad they will be going at spring break down to fort lauderdale to a showcase where there's going to be plenty of uh college scouts taking a look at the talent so it's it's just to try and better their skills and these players want to better their skills so black st louis is definitely looking at this it, it, it's working out great so far and going down the line, they'd like to add other categories, maybe, say, from the younger, you know, U13, U14, and then, say, on the U17 side and uh, help the kids up their game. Just wrapping up with Mark Lidbetter from the Suburban. Uh, Mark, we got to go, but uh, very yeah. quickly, tell us what's happening with GSP. Yeah, George uh, St. Pierre, this guy, he uh, wants to give back. He has a bursary program going along with the Quebec Foundation for Athletic Excellence. And just this week, seven student athletes shared in a total of $14,000 for academic excellence and academic and athletic uh, support. And what he does, though, is he gives to, to athletes who are, say, from sports where he honed his skills. So like boxing, fencing, judo, karate, Olympic wrestling, taekwondo, and even artistic gymnast, gymnastics he trained in. So you had seven of them, four in the academic excellence were Zoe Allaire Bourgie for Artistic Gymnastics from Ahunsa Karcheville. You had St. Hubert Philip Dion for Judo in the 60 kilogram category. You had Adrienne Lenard of uh, St. Lambert for Fencing in the EP division. 
and you had Sofia Gracias Heladi from Longay who uh, practices karate. And then the academic and athletic support, you had St. Paul Dabitsford, Julian Choquette for Olympic wrestling, Nicholas Mignon of Muscouche for Taekwondo, and boxer Louis Edward, Eduardo Santos Salero from Montreal North. And, you know, it's just a great thing. Here's a guy, his own bursary program to his foundation to help student athletes uh, it's, get along. It's fantastic. I couldn't agree with you more. Sports at the suburban.com. If you have an amateur sports item for Mark to cover, Mark, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Catch you next week.